By the majestic Loire River stands the historic city of Orléans, once freed by Joan of Arc in the 15th century and by General Patton in 1944. Started four centuries before Christopher Columbus discovered America, the Collegial Church of Saint-Pierre Pullier has become one of the most sought-after exhibition spaces in the Loire Valley. It is here in the heart of the most ancient part of Orléans, that one of its most famous native sons is having his third museum show of 2004. Its curator, Hélène Maupaté, graciously accepted to answer our questions. When we discovered Brisson's works and his catalogues, we were really impressed by his aesthetics. We were touched by the way he had been exploring his own sensitivity. He is, at the same time, at the surface of reality and permanently diving into the past. His universe is colored in Mediterranean hues and transports us into a world of childhood and play. However, his playfulness is tinged with nostalgia. The longer you stare, the more the impression of serenity fades. It is as if your conscience becomes aware of time elapsing. The images capture a moment of happiness, then reveal its ultimate fragility. Knowledgeable people can recognize all what Pierre-Marie Brisson owes to Greco-Roman art. He uses the fresco technique this immediately brings to mind images of Pompeii. You can feel the small cracks in the surface of his frescoes. When he works, he tears the papers, he damages them. As some visitors have said, he ages or mistreats them. So he makes you experience simultaneously the present and the past. And it creates a fascinating tension, a surprise, a distance, a past the work does not actually have. When you drive through the south of France, and particularly in the region of Nîmes, you see very strong colors. Pierre-Marie Brisson has made the colors of Mediterranean his own. For this exhibition, we carefully selected the painting that hangs at the entrance of the space the one with the deep blues. So the visitor, upon entering, is welcomed to dive into the Mediterranean Sea. His backgrounds are incredibly rich, his lines and his colors outstanding. The three key elements allow him to capture all at once the passage of time, a particular moment, and its ephemeral quality. He also does not give you everything. There is ambiguity in his artwork, as well as in us. His images are at the same time happy and full of the awareness of how elusive time is. Pierre-Marie Brisson captures a great deal of happiness in his canvases by engaging our desire to resuscitate our own memories. By looking at his paintings, you build your own personal dialogue. He is someone who suggests, and we sneak in. Pierre-Marie Brisson has come to terms with reality, and his recent work has a certain strength. His series of faces, for example, reflect that strength. But this strength is not overwhelming. It's suggested, and therefore, much more powerful. We witnessed 
how much joy people took while visiting the exhibition. We could see the smiles as they were leaving the college at church. The guest book mentions bliss, joy, color. You have to trust the public. Although they might not all possess a great knowledge of art history, I am convinced people who saw the exhibit have understood his works. As we left the Collegial and the banks of the Loire and its peaceful waters, we remembered another river, the Petit Rhône, where Pierre-Marie Brisson granted us an interview some months ago. Let's listen to the artist. The colors of Camargue, what influence do they have on your work? The colors are very influential in the continuity of this spirit. It's a country where the weather is often very beautiful. There's a lot of sun. There are nights where there are completely incredible skies which are constantly changing. There is a very intense light, very dense, which contains a lot of energy. It simply makes you feel like working. It's very stimulating, therefore naturally takes you towards color, towards optimism. How do you feel as an artist? Have you reached a complete control or are there still some questions? I feel more and more in total command of what I'm doing. It's a refreshing feeling when I think of a younger time when there were lots of hesitations, searching and doubt. I no longer ask myself these questions. I'm going this way and I feel it's the right one. What were your reactions to these two important exhibitions? And what do they mean to you? It feels like a consecration to have a series of works in these museums. And it's a way for me to show my work in a different context. It's different from presenting it in a gallery. The works are exhibited officially. They are presented in museums to be contemplated. There is always a certain degree of ambiguity in great works of art. What is the role of ambiguity in your works? The ambiguity consists in reaching the point when the artist first, then the public, asks the questions. What are they doing? Where are they going? One doesn't know whether they're coming back or leaving. These questions bring a degree of mystery, a sense of ambiguity, and a sense of possibilities which give life to the paintings. And on these canvases, you show the entire figure, while in preceding years, you could see only fragments. What was this approach that you took? Because I always wanted to give this scale close to reality. And in the canvases, which are not very large, one has to have some parts that are outside the picture frame. So sometimes heads just were cut off. You also said that it was to focus the viewer's attention on the gestures. Right, and it reinforces the image of the movement of the body, the arm, the leg, and it gives the viewer another way to see things. I sometimes wonder how I find myself where I am. Why do I do this type of painting? And why from this type of painting I have now reached that type? There is something inside the subconscious mind we are born with and that we cannot get rid of. It's something that I would say a little magical. But as Renoir once said, if it could be explained, it would not be art. Thank you.